Our first speaker is Evelyn Frangakis. She's the Assistant Director for Preservation at the New York Public Library. She leads an institution-wide program to preserve the library's permanent assets. Previously, she was Preservation Officer for the National Agricultural Library, Head of Preservation for University of Maryland Libraries, and Preservation Program Director for the Society of American Archivists. Please join me in welcoming Evelyn. I'm going to turn my timer on so that when Mike gives me my five minute warning, I already know. <laughs> well, good morning, everyone. It is nice to see you here today and congratulations on ARSC's 50th anniversary. What a nice place to celebrate on Indiana's beautiful campus. In this talk, I will share with you the New York Public Library's efforts to assess, prioritize, and develop long-term strategies for its audio and moving image, referred to, of course, as AMI, permanent research collections, which are among the largest and the most significant in the world. NYPL's AMI collections form an invaluable resource for scholars and artists and provide the world with an irreplaceable record of its cultural heritage. As those of you in this room are well aware, and as Mike has already said, in the next 10 to 15 years, the majority of this media is at risk of loss due to degradation, unsupported media technologies, and the increasingly cost prohibitive nature of preservation reformatting. The Andrew W. Mellon Foundation funded a comprehensive assessment of our collections, physical state storage conditions, cataloging needs, and preservation needs. This survey was carried out in 2013 and 14. I'll talk about it a little more. Now, while the focus of my talk is NYPL's efforts at scaling up to meet the challenge, in order to share recent efforts with you, I first need to give you some background information so that you have context about where NYPL started, how it got to where it is today, as well as its plans for the future. So NYPL has had internal labs for some time now, the result of investments within three distinct curatorial units at the, centered at the Library for the Performing Arts. In 2004, Digital Audio Committee was formed and recommended a change in practice from analog to digital and a change in organization of those of audio reporting to central preservation. In 2008, a library-wide reorganization brought the labs into a single unit reporting to the library central preservation program. The technical specialists then became a single team broadening their efforts to the library-wide challenge as opposed to their previous efforts for their distinct curatorial unit. So our hope, of course, was to take the talent that was already in the labs and apply it to the rest of the institution. We started elevating the profile of the library's collections, their risks and their needs in 2010, fairly aggressively at that point, bringing it to the attention of the executive team, talking about the fact that we didn't have much time, that the library had made an enormous investment in paper and other collections, and it was really time to look at the collections that were at risk due to time. Sometimes one doesn't know what a well-placed sentence in a conversation can do. And I learned that because now we are full in. So through a variety of internal actions, as well as the support of NYPL executive leadership, the library supported reaching out and being proactive and talking to the Mellon Foundations about possible opportunities. At the same time, we decided to conduct an environmental scan on what other institutions across the country were doing, and actually internationally as well, and investigate whether any current and future partnerships might be possible and mutually advantageous. As a result of these efforts, we decided to model our approach to Indiana's approach Key aspects that we modeled were their executive sponsorship, the AMI working group, their guiding principles, 
We developed our own, of course, but took their approach. And their approach to project management. We had broad involvement across NYPL with multiple curatorial, administrative, technical, and IT units on the working group. Our director served as the formal chair of the working group. I served as the, I guess, working chair of the working group. And uh, a good part of my team were on that working group as well, the technical specialists, in addition to the other um, types of uh, colleagues that we engaged in this process as well. IU also allowed us to beta test their media score and gave us some exposure to Avalon as well. So with support from the Mellon Foundation and assistance from contract partner AV Preserve, as well as the internal staff working group and the broad curatorial engagement, NYPL performed this very deep, thoughtful, and comprehensive assessment of our AMI collections. The three-phase project consisted of an on-site physical collection assessment and inventory, a preservation needs assessment for collections with recommendations for future action, and an assessment of NYPL's at then current AMI facilities, equipment, and workflow with resulting time, staff, and cost estimates for future action. Now, Chris and I had a conversation about how long it would realistically take to do an assessment of this type for collections our size. And we came to the conclusion that an 18 month time frame would be reasonable. We also talked about not wanting to, I talked about not wanting to lose momentum in the effort. And I asked him if he could put a team to it in 12, if I could on my end put a team to it in 12 months, could he on his end put a team to it in 12 months? And I don't know how we did it, but we did do it in 12 months. So it was very, very ambitious. All right, let's talk a little bit about fine. Oh, so I'm not going to talk about these slides, but I thought you might, some of you might be a little curious to look at the kinds of things we looked at. So this is just a slide um, talking a little bit about media score. And Chris might refer to it in his talk later. We also looked at labor hours of what it took to do various things. We also looked at life cycle costs. You're not really meant to see this. It's just a trigger for me to tell you that, yes, we really did look at all these things. And if anyone is interested, we can give you more information on that. So our findings, the project looked at 810,753 items with an estimated 522,402 hours of content spanning 60 formats and four asset types. These collections are held in four research centers within the New York Public Library and across nine curatorial units. One third of the collections emerged as urgent preservation priority because they are unique, rare, or mission critical. Now, since, um, since Mike talked a little bit about numbers, I haven't, I haven't shared these numbers in a while because we've changed direction, but given our, our processes at the time, our available labor at the time, and what resources we had, the problem identified that at current capacity, it would take us 41 years to get through the video. And that was the low number. It would take us 1,100 years to get through the audio. And it would take us 2,000 years to process it. Those were some scary numbers. All right. The recommendations of the assessment. So recommendations were developed in key areas, including storage conditions, processing, and sustainable collection policies for each site and for each collection. Four distinct scenarios were developed by which NYPL can reformat and otherwise preserve priority items. Costs and assumptions for each scenario were comprehensive, including recommended processing and associated digital storage costs, as well as the quantifiable costs of inaction. So we talked, one of our curators asked Chris and his team, can we calculate what the library's investments already are with the collections that we have that have come in so that we can use that as a measure of where we, what we've already done and then consequently what the costs of inaction might be. And so that was a very useful and interesting part of the process. 
So the scenarios that were developed were for the status quo, for increased outsourcing, for fixed budget, identifying a fixed budget per year, and, and a scenario that included no loss of things that we determined needed to be reformatted. All took into account a 15-year window of opportunity. Scenarios included costs, as I said, for reformatting, cataloging, and digital storage, and recommendations were made for policy changes in acquisitions and life cycle management, which are important to forward collection management. Well, those came with, as you might imagine, for a collection of our size, that comprehensive assessment told us we had a large scale problem with a large scale price tag. And so we needed to do a reassessment, take another look at, look at our internal capabilities, given the scale of the problem, right? Our internal capabilities, our current um, abilities in terms of lab production. We had conversations on how to meet the demand, how much to do in-house versus how much to do outsourcing, because part of the assessment included conversations about adding lab capacity, not just maximizing the staffing in the existing labs, but actually building out new labs. And so we also talked about, related to all of that, the funding needs and the possibilities as well as the realities of what we might be looking at. And we looked at the timeline, which we are hoping to do this on the shorter side of the 10 to 15 year window. So I want to note that, of course, in considering scaling up to meet this challenge, there are a myriad of consequences to other collections in the library. Institutions, after all, have limited resources. So for preservation, this has become a priority. And these, this specific format of collections have become an institutional priority. All right, so then I want to talk a little bit about changing practice. So the library has committed to changing collecting practice, and a special collections acquisition committee has been formed to further integrate current and future work. This follows up to the recommended policy and acquisitions changes that I just noted. So this special collections acquisitions committee does not only look at AMI collections, but looks at the totality of special collections across the institution and new policies and practices and communications across the institutions and AMI is one piece of that. So this committee is entirely new. Further curatorial engagement has been initiated for deeper prioritization to ensure that collections requiring reformatting get into the workflow. So the library is employing what I call a once through approach. Curators are asked to determine what their highest priorities are, but once they do that, we make prioritization at the collection level so that the curators are then told to essentially send us the entirety of that collection and not just pieces of it. We just want to get through the entire thing. And it's the library's hope that in this 10 to 15 year window, we will not only preserve the collections, but they will all be processed as well. Okay. Staffing commitments as next step. So the library actually has made a good stride in this area. It's reallocated vacant positions to create new positions and has secured some New York City funding for specialized positions. So through an internal change, this is an internal change in preservation. So I took a position um, and essentially put a person in a line in a position of the manager for preservation reformatting and field services. You don't need to know what field services is. It's um, an artifact of what this staff member used to do and still needs to be done in the institution. We had posted for a head of audio and moving image preservation and um, that position had been put on hold once we realized we needed a broader position and created the manager for preservation reformatting and field services somewhat in its stead. Then we secured special funding to hire a full-time audio engineer. It's a permanent position, as is the manager position. 
our labs are now maxed out on staffing. That one hire has maxed out all of our AMI labs. So we have four staff on the video side and four staff working on the audio side. The interesting thing for for us, or perhaps for me, I'm acutely aware that I have a fraction of the staffing on the audio side that I do on the video side when the audio collections are, I think, four times the size of our video collections. So that, that kind of weighs on me a bit. Um, we have just advertised for a media preservation assistant that will help with the, the increasing throughput. We do anticipate hiring more positions in that area, but we're starting with one. And while it's been a long time priority, we just hired a head of digital preservation last December. This staff member, of course, you might imagine is key to our AMI efforts because AMI preservation has been the driver for the past seven years for this service. We have also added processing positions to ramp up this rapid inventorying of the collections to ready them for the digitization queue. Now our next, other next steps have been a recent reorganization, which is essentially to take, as part of the library's commitment to meet the time frame necessary to save these collections, it decided to bring together uh, entities doing related preservation and processing work together to commit to a new organized and efficient process for both preserving and making accessible AMI items. But I want to say that in this effort, preservation is the priority and the driver. And that's where the rapid inventorying process comes in. We will process materials only to the extent that is needed to get them into a digitization queue. How am I doing on time, Mike? Am I close? Ooh, I'm doing, I'm doing well. Okay, because I'm getting close to the end. All right, so some practicalities. We have developed, um, as I said, this rapid inventory process, and we are on the verge of signing a master service agreement that's been in the works for quite some time. But this will allow us to work with multiple vendors over a period of years without having to go out on an RFP process every time new funding becomes available. And that, for us, is a long and arduous process. We are working with NYPL software development teams to automate processes for QC, for repository ingest, and notifications. We continue to add Isilon storage capacity, and we have built in redundancies to our resulting products, right? So we have three. We have hard drives, not our preference, but we do still have um, hard drives that are temporary storage. And Isilon has a, a mirror site, and of course we have tape backup as well. So our next steps in terms of funding. So the library is moving toward a focused fundraising strategy. So previously, we might have sought specific grants to collections that interested specific funders and agencies, and those came with a wide assortment of restrictions and how we carry them out, how we integrate them efficiently into our larger workflows, and so be, essentially they slow us down. They're wonderful projects, they're very interesting. We love it when donors are interested in specific facets of our collections. It, it just um, alters the efficiency of our operations. So the library is also committed to reducing these one-off grants and moving to a larger and more systematic sources, uh, well, larger sources of revenue in a more systematic manner and in a sequential manner. The library has also been reviewing existing funding sources to see where additional reallocations can be made, and that's an ongoing process. It, any time a position vacates, it is looked at to see if that position and I'm talking about anywhere, not just in our programs, whether that position is still needed in that area or is needed elsewhere in the library. So these evaluations are ongoing. And this, of course, refers back to what I was saying earlier about implications to existing uh, collections and programs. So currently, the library is investigating new possibilities and has been 
asked by a funder to come in for a major project. The project itself will be 18 months, but will allow us to scale up significantly and scale up in a way that will test our capabilities with our added staffing. And the idea is during this time we will plan for another round, which will hopefully be longer than 18 months in duration for a more um, significant funding source, and we will continue that way. So our ramp-up strategy is, is incremental. Okay, so I want to say that as a result of raising the profile of at-risk audio and moving image materials, concurrent to a library-wide strategic planning effort, the work of this collective team that did the assessment and is following through on planning and implementation has reaffirmed that sustainable long-term preservation strategies for these collections best serve the library's collections and users. NYPL's executive team has committed to taking decisive and efficient action. They have made AMI preservation one of the library's key strategic initiatives. That's very important for us. And by facing up to the scale of the challenge and the ongoing threat of obsolescence and degradation, the library is better positioned to save its most unique, distinctive, and mission-critical collections. Um, I realize that I haven't included statistical numbers about the work that we've done, and I'm happy to um, answer questions about that after the q and I'm, We do have time to listen to this, but I don't think you want to spend three minutes and 39 seconds listening to this wonderful um, synopsis of different media playing um, Carmen, but I have it up here because I, I highly recommend that you do take a look at it. And I won't embarrass one of my staff members who's in this room who did the most phenomenal job with this. <laughs> um, but the person that did it is in this room. I thank you for your attention. Um, it's been a pleasure to be here, and I'll look forward to your questions. We want to know who it is. <laughs> uh, <laughs>